Hey everybody, this is a video about Collider Modular ZUM. ZUM is a pitch summator, which is a fancy way of saying it allows you to describe different intervals and then add them together on the basis of a clock signal. Let's take a look, it's actually quite easy to use. So the first thing that we need to do to get ZUM going is we need to give it this master gate in. And this is gonna govern every time a gate in happens, we're gonna get some kind of pitch information on the output. Now over here on the side, you can see I have a sync generator and a divider set up, so let's just go ahead and pass that in. LED starts flashing here, and what's gonna happen is now, every time we get a gate signal here, it's gonna use the information down below to create a pitch on the output. Now the way this works is there are eight channels, and each channel has a slider that indicates an interval. It has a gate input, and then has a little bit of uh, opportunity for modulation, which I'll talk about in a second. The way that we can use this is we can set interval values. So you can see here I chose four semitones, maybe I'll do one with seven semitones, I'll do an octave, and then maybe that one will be two semitones. Now you notice that even though we have set these values here, we're not getting anything yet on the output other than C0, which corresponds to zero volts. And the reason why is in order for each of these intervals to be added to the output signal, we need to give it a gate here. So for example, I'll take this first LFO that I have and I'll patch it into this first channel. And if you watch, what happens is every time a gate comes into the master gate in, it will evaluate the state of all of the channel gates. Now any gate that is high down here, which is represented by this red light flashing, anytime this is high, the interval value on the slider will be added. So if you look over here, you can see that we're jumping back and forth between C0 and E0 on the basis of if this gate is becoming high or not. Now that's a little low. Uh, let me add a couple of octaves on here. I'll explain what I just did in a second. You can see we've jumped up to something that's a little bit more listenable. Let's go ahead and some more gate signals here. So I'm gonna add random LFOs to these first three here. And so we're randomly going to add four semitones together with seven semitones together with an octave and maybe we'll do a fourth one here. So we're randomly gonna add all of these together on the state of whatever these LFOs are at. And if you watch the output here, you can see it's jumping all over creating a sequence. Let's actually take a listen to that so we can get an idea of what it sounds like. Now, to save on screen space and modules, I've just gone ahead and I've dropped in the, the plugin host here. I'm gonna be using Yuhi Hive 2 to give us some kind of uh, audible output. So I'm gonna take the pitch out, this sum out from ZUM. I'm gonna pass it to the pitch in of the CV to MIDI. Now this MIDI signal is gonna be feeding this plugin host. And we'll take the clock out, we'll patch that into the gate. So let's play around with this a little bit. Now, what really affects the output is changing not only the intervals that we're adding, but also the gates that we're feeding into it. So for example, the slower the gates fire, the more likely we are to get repetitions. The faster they fire, the more likely we are to get diversity in our melody. All right, so that gives you an idea of the basic gist of this module. Now there's a couple of other things that I wanna point out that make this more interesting and fun. And I'm gonna start with my favorite, which is rotate. If you've ever used a rotating clock divider or something along those lines, then this concept will be familiar. What rotate does is it will shift the input gates to add the value to the left or the right. So let me get rid of some of these gates here. Let's simplify what we've got going on. So right now we have a simple sequence running where 
whenever this first gate happens, we're going to toggle between C0 and E0. What we can do is we can rotate that. So now instead, when this gate on channel 1 is high, because we've rotated by 1, it will go to the right by 1 and it will use this value. Likewise, we can rotate 2. So that's what rotate does. And it's possible to modulate this as well. Something that I found that's cool about Rotate is you get an entirely different sequence just by shifting one. So while performing live, you can just change the knob and get a different sequence. And if you want to go back to where you were, you can. Now, this starts getting particularly interesting when you have multiple gates happening. So for example, I'm going to patch in three gates, and we are continuing to modulate rotate. So here it is with no rotation. And we'll go ahead and we'll add in some rotation. possible also to add a little bit of glide on these pitches. <laughs> That's getting a little weird. Now in addition to that, there are two different kinds of channels here. So this one you've seen me using, and what the switch does is it inverts the gates. So I'm going to take all of the gate signals off, so we've got no gates connected to the jack here. And I'll take rotate off too. And you can see here that we're getting C0 on the output. Now these gate inputs here are normal low. So without a jack connected, if we change the switch, it basically will treat this gate signal as if it's high. Now likewise, if we passed a gate signal in here, what we could do is we could invert that. something more interesting. So you can see here that every time this signal goes above 4 volts, we are treating that as being high. Well, we can invert that. Now I added these switches here just to add some fun performance time control. This is the kind of thing I like to turn on and off while I'm playing around with modular. There's one other thing we can modulate though that I want to point out, and that's these down here. So the, the, the mod CV down here will actually let you take an incoming control voltage value and modulate the interval. Yes, indeed. So for example, let's say I will use this first channel. We'll start randomly adding this. Well, I could use this sine wave and I could modulate the value of this semitone. Now, word of warning here, when you start to do this, it's very easy to go outside of a scale. We can simply use a quantizer to fix that, but I'll let you hear what this sounds like. So if you want to have a lot of fun with modulation here, sometimes it's easiest just to add a, a quantizer. And let's go ahead and add Let's go ahead and add one here. So we'll take this output and we'll wire up the clock. Mm -hmm. 
Let's have some fun here. Now there's one feature I almost forgot to mention and I've set up a somewhat complicated patch to demonstrate here. That is this last port here labeled base. Now the idea of base is maybe you already have a sequencer that you like using or a sequence that you've created using some other module. In that case, you can pass that sequence in to ZUM and all of the actions that happen on these channels will be summed with your base sequence. Now you can use ZUM then as a way to enhance or expand your sequences, not just a way to create a sequence from scratch. So let me walk you through this patch real quick and then I'll show you an action. So we've got here the basic 8-step sequencer from Cherry Audio and the output of that is gonna get passed into ZUM. And then the output of both of those are gonna get passed into Septitone. Now down here I've got a couple of things set up but probably the two interesting ones are I'm using Zadok also by Collider Modular and this is just giving me a source of hard to predict gates which I'm using to trigger the channels of ZUM. Now the gate output from the 8-step sequencer and the pitch output from the quantizer, which is coming out of ZUM, are gonna go into this CV to MIDI, and then CV to MIDI is gonna go here into this plugin hose. So let's take a listen to this patch. One of the things you'll notice is that even though it sounds nice, it will become repetitive fairly quickly. So by this point, you already know exactly what the sequence is gonna sound like. And this is where ZUM can come in, is because we've got we've got these three gates wired up on the first three channels, and we can just start playing around with it and adding in extra intervals and seeing what happens. So I think that gives you an idea of kind of the diversity and range of ZUM and the different things that you can use it for. I hope you have a lot of fun playing with this and make music that you enjoy.